ventilation should be carried out by four to five team members using a protocol to avoid complications. Prone position recruits collapse avioli and improves VQ matching with high airway pressures. It reduces mortality in patients with PO2 FiO2 ratio less than 150 millimeters of mercury. Studies observed mortality benefits in patients with severe ARDS. Patients were turned prone within 24 hours of recognition and kept prone for at least 12 to 16 consecutive hours per day. Check for contraindications. Elevated intracranial pressure greater than 30 mmHg or cerebral perfusion pressure less than 60 mmHg. Massive hemotitis. Recent tracheal surgery or stemopathy. Serious facial trauma or facial surgery. Deep venous thrombosis treated for less than two days. Cardiac pacemaker inserted in the last two days. Unstable spine, femur or pelvic fractures. MAP less than 65 mmHg. Pregnancy. Single anterior chest tube with air leaks. Preparation of the patient for proning while IMV. Check for contraindications. Consider possible adverse effects of prone positioning, for example, if on chest tube drainage. Whenever possible, explain the maneuver to the patient and their families. Confirm from a recent chest x-ray that the tip of the endotracheal tube is located 2 to 4 centimeters above the main carina. Inspect and confirm that the endotracheal tube and all central and peripheral catheters are firmly secured. Consider exactly how the patient's head, neck, and shoulder girdle will be supported after they are turned prone. Assemble all needed pillows, foam pads, or other supports that might be needed. Stop tube feeding. Check for residual. Fully evacuate the stomach and cap or clamp the feeding and gastric tubes. Prepare endotracheal suctioning equipment and review what the process will be if copious airway secretions abruptly interfere with ventilation. Prepare all IV lines and other catheters and tubing for connection when the patient is prone. Assure sufficient tubing link. Reposition IV tubing towards the patient's head on the opposite side of the bed. Prior to starting the procedure, bring down the head of the bed. Turning Procedure Place one or more people on both sides of the bed to be responsible for the turning processes and another at the head of the bed to assure the central lines and the endotracheal tube do not become dislodged or kinked. Increase the FiO2 to 1.0 and note that the mode of ventilation, tidal volume, the minute ventilation and the peak and plateau airway pressures. With the sheets that are currently on the patient, create an envelope prior to moving the patient. Pull the patient to the edge of the bed, farthest from whichever lateral distubitus position will be used while turning. Turn the patient to the lateral decubitus position using a log rolling procedure. Remove ECG leads and patches. Suction the airway, mouth, and nasal passages if necessary. Continue turning to the prone position. Reposition in the center of the bed. If the patient is on a standard hospital bed, turn their face towards the ventilator, assure that the airway is not kinked and has not migrated during the turning process. Suction the airway if necessary. Support the face 
and shoulders, appropriately avoiding any contact of the supporting padding with the orbits or the eyes. Position the arms for patient comfort. If the patient cannot communicate, avoid any type of arm extension that might result in a brachial plexus injury. Osculate the chest to check for right mainstem intubation. Reassess the tidal volume and the minute ventilation. Adjust all tubing and reassess all connections and functions. Reattach ECG patches and leads to the back. Tilt the patient into reverse Trendelenburg, slight intermittent lateral repositioning 20 to 30 degrees should also be used changing sides at least every two hours. Document a skin assessment every shift, specifically inspecting weight-bearing ventral surfaces.